guys, it's Jeremy here at Metal Music Meltdown, back with another video. What I have you today, guys, is my next installment of my top 10 albums of each year. If you are new to the channel, welcome. And if you're a subscribing member, welcome back. And also, if you're new to the channel, definitely check out my playlist. I started back in 1970 where Metal All began and worked my way through the years chronologically. And we're up to 2014, so definitely check out the other videos of my playlist. Lennon's trying to get situated behind me here. And like I said, I go through the years, pick up my albums I enjoyed the most from that year, from at least memory, or sometimes I miss the odd one here or there, but I do my best. Uh, so 2014 was a pretty strong year, guys. Some really killer albums. It wasn't too hard to find 10 albums right away. Some really key albums for me this year, too. A couple bands that I, I discovered this year that I got into much later in their career, and I kind of went back and discovered their earlier discographies and are, that are now some of my favorite bands. Uh, so let's jump right in, guys. Number 10, I went with the fifth studio album, At War With Reality by At The Gates. This was their first release uh, since 95's, um, sorry, 95 Slaughter of the Soul. Huge gap in between albums, uh, concept album, really cool sounding, a lot of experimental stuff going on. Actually their debut album on a major label too, which is pretty interesting, but a really killer album. I was really excited for this one when it came out. They were gone for so long, um, but I really enjoyed this album. It was really solid. At number nine, I went with Constricting Rage of the Merciless from Goat Horror. Really cool band, uh, black and death metal band. Uh, this is their sixth doo, doo album. I got to these guys a few albums before this, but I always love their sound. Very unique sounding band. They don't really sound like anyone else. And they're super aggressive, tight playing, really good live band. And every album is just a banger. Every, everything that they put out, I've enjoyed. So if you're not familiar with these guys, definitely check them out. At number eight, I went with the super group entitled Killer Be Killed. A uh, really cool project. Um, has some really cool guys, some bands I really enjoy. Of course, Max Cavalera, one of my metal heroes. Of course, Ex Serpentura, Soulfly, uh, Caval Cavalera Conspiracy, all his projects that he does. And it also has uh, Troy Sanders from um, Mastodon. Uh, had Pen, uh, Ben Kohler on the debut from uh, Mar uh, Mars Volta. And also uh, Craig from um, Dillager Escape Plan. A really cool project, really killer songs on this one. Three vocalists, which really adds a really cool dimension to it. Super heavy, catchy stuff. Great riffing from all the guys. Just a really fun project. And they put out two albums so far. Um, I haven't picked up the second one yet, but the first one was really, really good. I listen to it all the time. And uh, definitely check these guys out. At number seven, I went with the 17th studio album from Overkill, entitled White Devil Armory. These guys never disappoint. Uh, most of their albums make my list. And their, their latest material has just been on fire. They've been putting out really quality material really late in, the, in their career. And uh, this album kicked ass. A lot of cool songs. Just thrash in your face, exactly what you want a thrash band to do. And uh, yeah, they're keeping it alive and just killing it. Bobby Blitz and the boys have just been thrashing out for 30 years and they're not slowing down. At number six, I went with the sixth studio album from uh, Mastodon, Once More Around the Sun. Really cool artwork on this one, very vibrant and colorful. I really cool. I like the artwork on that one a lot. It's got some really cool, catchy tracks on this one as well. High Road, The Mother Load. Uh, Once More Around the Sun title track. Just a classic album from a band I really love, progressive heavy uh, heavy metalers. And I love their sound. Always been into this band for quite a long time. Not my favorite band from this, uh, favorite album from this band. That's why it's a little bit lower on my list. Uh, but a really classic album from these guys and they never disappoint. Uh, number five was uh, my introduction to this band. And actually there was their last studio album. The fifth studio album from Agalock entitled uh, The Serpent and the Sphere. They're like a blackened doom. They have folk metal elements in there. Really unique band, really killer stuff. Cool artwork on this one. And like I said, this was my introduction to the band, which just happens to be their last album to date. I've heard rumors that they're supposed to be putting out a new album maybe this year or next year. So I'm super pumped for that. I hope they, I hope they, I know they just recently got back together last year, I think it was, and played a couple dates. Man, this album kicks a whole bunch of ass. And ever since I heard this album, I went back and looked into their uh, previous albums. And all their albums are just killer. If you're not familiar with Agalog, please check these guys out. 
They have a really cool, somber, droning, kind of, but still heavy. It's kind of hard to explain, but a really cool band, really good stuff. At number four, I had to have my favorite band in here. Oops, one sec, guys. The Mighty Opeth with Pale Communion. Uh, this is where they really changed gears and they went full prog rock. They kind of stripped away all the gutturals and the heavy metalness of their music. And the previous album was kind of the same too, but a little bit had a harder edge to it. I find Pale Communion was the first album of theirs that went really stripped down prog rock only. Not that I still love it. Still brings you on a journey like Opeth does. Great riffing, tight playing, great insane vocals. Still love it just the same. It just sounds different and hits you in a different way. Really solid album from these guys though. Definitely check it out. Number three, I went with the Mighty Exodus, uh, Blood In, Blood Out. Killer artwork on this one. Uh, I remember picking this up and I was just blown away how good it was. Uh, this was the first album that Steve Sousa was back on since uh, 2004's uh, Tempo of the Damned. Uh, really good vocals on this one, still from Steve. And uh, just some killer songs, Balls Out Thrash. That really relentless riffing from uh, Gary Holt. And uh, yeah, Exodus has always been my my one of my favorite thrash bands. Probably my second favorite behind Testament. And they just kick ass every time. Number two is another band I discovered in the two thousand in 2014. It's the band, uh, Finnish melodic death metal band Insomnium. Uh, with their album Shadows of the Dying Sun. It's their sixth studio album. Again, this was my debut, my introduction to the band, I should say. And I got into the much later, didn't really hear of this band prior to that. Went back and checked out all their discography, man, they kick ass. Really good melodic death metal, one of the best in the game. Love this artwork on this one as well. And this today is probably still my favorite album from these guys, but they have some killer, killer albums. I picked up about three or four of them so far, but I'm working on picking up all their discography over time. And number one, guys, I had to go with uh, Behemoth's uh, 10th studio album, The Satanist. It's my favorite album from the band. I used to love Demigod the most, uh, but after this album came out, it took its place in number one. A lot of people like some of their earlier albums as number one or even Demigod for some people. But man, as soon as I heard this album, it just blew me away. It's a masterpiece, really cool sound. It's one of those albums where they caught lightning in a bottle. They just, everything was on point, everything aligned. Perfect production, great music, great songwriting, good variety. With, with songs like Blow Your Trumpet to Gabriel, um, let's see, Amen, uh, the Satanist title track, and the uh, closing track, Oh Father, Oh Satan, Oh Son. It's just this crazy epic closer, the, one of the best closers in many, many years. And I fucking love this album. So let me know down below, guys, what your picks of 2014 would be. If there's anything I missed, uh, the uh, Cannibal Corpse album barely didn't make my list. It was almost at the bottom. But there's a lot of good releases this year. Let me know down below is what you guys would pick. And stay tuned for 2015 coming in the next couple weeks. And thanks for watching, guys. Keep it metal.